Hello, and welcome to Space Engine Exploration. So it's been a little bit since I've recorded one of these. By a little bit, I mean years. But it's fine. It's all good. I I, I got the milk, guys. It's fine. I'm back. That's a neat solar flare. So I posted a community post a few weeks ago explaining that um, I got a hold of Stellar Drone, the artist for the music. And they stated that what I am doing is perfectly fine and that I can use the emails that we chatted back and forth with as proof that I do have rights to use the music. The music is not licensed to anything, it's completely free to use. So over like the past three or four weeks since I've updated my last video, I immediately went on this binge. Every hour I have off pretty much, I have been recreating thumbnails for all of the videos in the series, redoing the titles, and getting everything relisted. So if you go to my channel right now, you can see that Space Engine Exploration is back. The original version, with all the original comments and everything, and my horrible, horrible mic quality that I had almost a decade ago. <laughs> but one of the unfortunate factors is that I lost like 40 or so of the videos due to falsified copyright claims. So those have been deleted. I deleted them off my channel just to just so like the pursuance wouldn't pursue any further so we went from like 120 videos down to like I think 92 but ultimately that's fine it was quite the hefty process to get these all relisted I literally put in over a thousand entries on a spreadsheet just checking off thumbnails descriptions retitling re like redoing everything and I've always tried to be proactive in the comments, like answering everybody's questions in regards to why the series is down. Like, I'm gonna be honest, I I've been stressing about this for years now, because <laughs> I have dumped countless hours into the series, and it was quite the project for me. But it's back, and I plan to continue to produce these videos. I do have a full-time job. I don't have as much free time as I used to have when I started the channel, but... I'm hoping maybe every two to four weeks to sit down, relax, shut off my brain, and continue to view viewer suggestions. One of the biggest and most unfortunate factors of viewing viewer suggestions though is the fact that Space Engine is no longer free. It's $30 on Steam, it occasionally goes on sale. Please do not buy the game to post suggestions, um, <laughs> don't do that please. Please only buy the game if you want to support the developer and if you enjoy the game itself. If, you, if this looks like it interests you, then, I mean, be my guest. Purchase the game. <laughs> I hope you get a lot of playtime and hours with it. But with that said, if you are the proud owner of the modern version of Space Engine, you are welcome to post suggestions in the comments and I will absolutely go and view them. Will I get to 100% of them? No, probably not. But I'll do my best to get to as many as possible while also keeping the video length in check. But as a response to the comments I did receive, do I want to continue the series? I do. Did I enjoy making the series? I did. Did I enjoy making videos? I did. It's just really difficult to deal with the um, playing field that YouTube has. Uh, I did unlist the videos, but I, I would post remarks to like losing monetization or uh, videos being falsely claimed and all that just to kind of give some insight of what's going on but I've never really made a full video explaining the entire situation that I've been in. For the most part I've just been responding to almost every comment that's asked. It's like I have not really gone anywhere. I I've been paying attention to the channel it's just uh, kind of been out of my hands really. Okay so let's go ahead and just start uh, getting the hut up and start free roaming a bit here. Um, hmm, I did bookmark some things while I was out getting some thumbnails for the series, and I am going to take a moment to visit some of those. Okay, so I'm sitting in the center of Galaxy M82, the Starburst Galaxy, which has gotten quite a visual overhaul in the latest version of the game. This might have happened in 9.9.0, but... As you can see, it has a beautiful supernova 
exploding out of the center of it. <laughs> it's really cool looking. Um, unfortunately, one of the bugs in this game is currently it doesn't have a uh, central supermassive black hole. None of these stars are orbiting around the black hole. There, there, there just is none. This is a galaxy without a central black hole at the moment. <laughs> But I did stumble across this uh, updated version when I was getting thumbnails, and it looks really, really cool. Especially with the volumetric Nova effects in the newer versions of the game. It's beautiful. It's a little bit grainy, but it's much better than like the 2D particles they used to use in the old version. In fact, uh, I think I just saw a nebula somewhere around here. See if I can locate a nebula. We'll just go to the Milky Way for that. Okay, so here's the Milky Way galaxy, which has also gotten a little bit of a texture overhaul. And here is the Carina Nebula, which still looks a little bit like the older version, but still using more of like a 2D particle effect. Like, the volume effect is not... Yeah, you can see the particles rotating around. It's because it's using billboard textures. But if I find a randomly generated nebula somewhere around here... Oh, here we go. You can see they look really cool. They do cause quite a performance hit, though. But if you fly into it, you can see it's incredibly bright. Tons of energy. Let's go ahead and click on the center cluster here. And let's go to the center of it and let's see if there's a black hole. Mm, it doesn't appear so. Okay, well that's fine. I do have some more on my pin list here. Here's a binary black hole with an accretion disk, robbing energy from this star. And as you can see, they got quite the visual overhaul. And you can see there's jets shooting out of the uh, poles of the black hole and you can see the accretion disk looks amazing they're not just like that red spirally thing anymore Let's see if I can just slow this down a little bit there we go you can see they still have the, the refracting effect you can see the star from all areas of the black hole distorting the light of the star and if we fly through the center of it instead of just being completely engulfed in it you kind of just pass right through now. <laughs> but again, just like the volumetric nebulas, or yeah, the volumetric nebulas, they do hit your PC's performance quite a bit when you fly into them. So it takes quite a beefy uh, video card to run that. So here's another cool one. This is a planet, and it has life. Or, no, this one has life. <laughs> Actually, I think these both do. Yeah, no. The life is just, yeah, it's panspermia transferred over to the moon of that planet. Uh, it's subglacial. We can't see any textures or anything fancy for it, but neat nonetheless. At least I don't think so. This isn't a life texture, right? No, it's just some rocks. As you can see when you collide into the terrain now, um, it does load a mipmap of textures. So it, it looks like uh, it makes thing it gives things a much better scale, I would say, because it used to look like you could just stand in this crater, but as the textures slowly scale down, it makes it look much larger. And they're really detailed textures too. Um, the interesting about these two planets, though, is they have life. And they're next to the center black hole of IC-1101. Uh, I believe the biggest black hole in the game. I'm not sure. They could possibly generate bigger ones these days. Uh, I believe in the older version of the game, this was the biggest one. But who knows? It might be able to freely generate bigger ones now. And as you can see, this looks intense. Incredibly bright jets. You see the accretion disk. It's glowing, the outer particles, you can see it get like more and more energetic as it gets towards the center. And it's all volumetric. So it's like you're really flying through a cloud. It's so awesome. 
And just like any other black hole in the game, if you fly, you just go right through it. <laughs> it used to be that you would land in the center of it, but not anymore. So here's another really cool one. We got this beautiful planet with the rings. But the thing is, it's a binary planet system. They both have rings. <laughs> you can see one is a cool sub-Neptune, which they went a little bit more detailed with the classifications of planets in this, so... They kind of associate with uh, other planets that are in the solar system, so you'll see like Mega Jupiters, Sub Jupiters, Sub Neptunes, Mega Neptunes, stuff like that. Which just implies this is going to be a more um, icy gas giant versus um, Jupiter, which is more of like a hydrogen helium gas giant. And as you can see, the this is well, it's a binary system, I believe. Yeah, it's a binary system. Is it? Yeah, yeah, it's binary, so it's not, uh, not a moon. But you can see this is a, uh, Aaron Terra, so it's, uh, basically the replacement for the desert worlds that were in the old version of the game. You can see it generates, like, new types of terrain, such as these, uh, like, winded sand dunes. See a snow capped. Is this snow capped? No, it's just really shiny volcano here. And if I were to fly into the rings, it's no longer just a texture. Well, it is, but it procedurally generates, let me pause this, dust and asteroids for the rings. It's so cool. It does have this weird little uh, fading effect. Kind of reminds me of, like, um, ray tracing, but I don't understand why it does that. But you see the individual little rocks it procedurally generates for it. And they got a little bit of a texture, but they're just, they're just orbs. I assume, like, tessellated to just get rounder and rounder as you get closer to them. But that is really neat. So here's a fun one. It's a neutron star. <laughs> it has an accretion disk and everything because it is stealing mass from that star right there. Incredibly dense. You can see the reflections of the star in the neutron star. And if we can just pause the game and decrease the magnitude here, or exposure rather, we can see the surface detail of it. It's just really warpy. No hills. Literally flatter than a pancake. And if we go ahead and restore the exposure here, you can see it's so dense that it is bending light. And as you can see, it does have the modern accretion disk effect with the volumetric particles. Really neat looking and incredibly bright. <laughs> so for the last planet I'm going to be visiting here, flying through the rings of it, we have a frigid arid aquaria. So, an ice planet? Is this the replacement for Titans? I'm not too sure. But as you can see, they do have impact craters with material ejected out, forming these cool looking star patterns, also known as disco craters. And you can even see cracks on the surface of the planet. Kind of makes this a wobbly wavy effect. And as you can see, we're sitting inside a beautiful purple and blue nebula. And there's a rings in the sky right there. It does have a little bit of atmosphere. What's this? Just some type of green surface texture. It's not live. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. And as you can see, it's orbiting around a binary star system. Wow, those rings are solid. <laughs> they don't have like a gradual cutoff or any uh, asteroids like carving into them. Nope, it's just a complete ring system. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave it a like, subscribe, share it with your friends, do all that nonsense. Um, and go view video other videos in the playlist. That'll really help out because my my my, my metrics on my, my channel are not so great anymore. Probably because I've been gone for a few years and that, and that might be it. 
Anyways, if you have the game, feel free to look up some IDs and post them down in the comments below, and I'll be sure to visit them in the next video. I hope you're all excited for the series coming back, and I will see you all in the next video.